Here it is, the SSAG video. This video is about the fun you'll have with the Celeste One StarSense Auto Guider. It's advertised as being simple, but I found it quite amusing as you'll see. First, what is it? The SSAG combines the benefits of the StarSense system, which has been around for a few years, with an Auto Guider. It's a great idea, that seems obvious in hindsight. I had wondered for years why the Starsense system wasn't used for guiding as well. When it finally came out, I thought it would be perfect for the observatory. The Starsense system allows the telescope to align itself automatically using the stars without needing to manually align it with bright stars. After aligning, you just enter your desired object and the telescope should find it accurately. With the guider, the object stays in the center of the field of view, making long exposure photography possible. At our observatory, we host regular observation nights. A system like this is invaluable, if it works. Getting there is a challenge. Fun number one, attaching it to the telescope. If you have a Celeste One Azimutai go-to mount, no problem. For everyone else, it's tricky. The system comes with a mount for Azimutai Guto systems. If you, like me, use a Celeste One Equatorial mount, you have to disassemble the device to attach a different mount. This is frustrating because the manual says the SSAG optics are precisely focused, but taking it apart can affect this, of course. The manual even says you might need to refocus after switching mounts. So I took it apart, attached the new mount and put it back together. I thought, great, ready to go. But then came fun number two. The mount, fresh out of the box, newest AVX model didn't recognize the SSAG. Same likely goes for Azimutai Goto mounts. Fun number two affects everyone. You might think, just update it. Not so easy. Fun number three. At home, I connect the AVX to my PC to update it. You need a USB 2.0 mini cable not included. Feels like the early 2010s. If you have an old Canon camera, you might have one. Celeste one, please include this cable, it's 2024, who has these lying around? But the fun isn't over yet. Fun number four, to update the mount you need Celeste one CFM software. I found it after some searching, downloaded it and thought I was set, but no. On three different computers it only unpacked and did nothing else. I discovered you need Java runtime environment, which most computers no longer have. Even high-end laptops from 2018 to 2023 don't have it. After downloading Java, the program finally started. Now what? Fun number five, updating the firmware. With the new AVX hand controller it was straightforward. Though the interface is confusing, it says all packages downloaded successfully, but the firmware is still the same. Turns out you have to click again to start the update. Finally, the AVX was updated. Updating older AVX hand controllers is tougher. You need two cables, the mount and the power supply. Connect everything, press 7 on menu and the Celeste one sign on the hand controller and then CFM recognizes it. Go through the update process, check the version and you're good to go. Both AVX mounts were updated and the SSAG Auto Align appeared on both. Hand controllers, done? Hopefully. The test. The mount aligns itself with Auto Align. I look for the first object, nothing. Maybe the mount and telescope aren't perfectly aligned. Turns out the mount thought it was showing subtle, but was actually centered on Deneb. How? After aligning with three bright stars, it confused Sartre and Deneb? Unbelievable. At least the guiding worked. I decided to photograph the North America Nebula for over an hour, as the guiding was good. That was it for now. Fun number six. According to the manual, the SSAG might need refocusing, which requires Celeste One's CPWI software. So I downloaded and installed it. Needing more drivers to recognize the SSAG, connecting everything, I could use LiveView now. But the SSAG is picky about USB-C cables, only the fourth one worked. I tested the focus during the day on distant trees, not ideal but manageable. Bad weather prevented further tests. One thing is clear, I spent many hours getting a system to work that you buy to avoid such work. Getting a finder with Guider working through PhD is much simpler. This shouldn't be the case, especially for 899 euros. The outdated software, confusing connections and the mount not recognizing the Guider are major issues. 
These could be fixed easily. Two different mounts, automatic system recognition and simpler focusing. The mount showing the wrong star is also problematic. Conclusion: The SSAG can be great, but its complicated setup is not fitting for a device advertising a simple and costing nearly 900 euros. I'd be glad once it's running smoothly, but if I had known the hassle, I might have chosen the 2600 MC Duo and used PhD for guiding. It looks complicated but isn't, unlike the SSAG, which looks simple but isn't. What's your opinion on the SSAG? Did you find this video helpful? Did you expect the setup to be like this? Let me know in the comments. Of course, I'll keep you updated how this SSAG journey goes on. I still believe in this thing, even if the start is very annoying. Please, guys.